of New Orleans in the Hardball Sideshow. But we begin with the raging debate over health care that is taking place across the country. Joining me now is Congresswoman Nikki Songus, a Democrat of Massachusetts, and Congressman Brian Bilbray, a Republican from California. Nikki Songus, uh, you heard Chuck Grassley, who has been negotiating with Democrats in the Senate, uh, not refute, when given the chance, uh, this notion of death panels uh, that, that is not in any bill anywhere. Let's listen to what he actually said about it yesterday. I won't name uh, people in Congress or people in Washington, but there's some people that think it's a terrible problem that grandma's laying in the hospital bed with tubes in her. In the house bill, there's counseling for aim to life. That's it. Uh, and uh, from that standpoint, uh, you have every right to fear. Uh, you, should, uh, you shouldn't have counseling at the end of life. You ought to have counseling 20 years before you're going to die. We should not have a government program that determines you're going to pull the plug on grandma. So, do the American people have every right to fear that the government might pull the plug on grandma? Well, I'm actually surprised at Senator Grassley because this notion and this version of what's in the House bill has been absolutely debunked. It's true there is a, a, a provision in there that uh, says that if physicians have a conversation uh, with their patient, that they have a right around these issues, all of which are very, very important, uh, that they have a right to reimburse for their time spent at this. It doesn't require that conversation. It can be initiated by uh, a patient as they learn of great challenges of their own health care. Uh, but this interpretation that Senator Grassley has given it is one that, as I said, uh, has been absolutely debunked. And um, I, I think in order for us to have the kind of discussion we really do need to have, uh, we have to moderate the tone of it and not use our differences to, again, do nothing. Congressman Bill Bray, has any member of your staff rushed into your office pointing to a section of any one of these bills as written to say, hey, look, hey, look, the government's going to kill grandma? No, they haven't. In fact, what they pointed out is that this this kind of fear is why we don't we shouldn't be trying to at least give the appearance that we're rushing the judgment and trying to force something. I think once we start setting arbitrary deadlines and saying we don't have time to talk about this, it sets off that paranoia, that, that concern that government is somehow doing something that they don't want us to know about. And I think that end of life consultation is something we need to talk about as a society, as a community. And I think the biggest concern is that people are saying, are, is there something in this bill that I'm not allowed or shouldn't be reading? And that sets off this concern. So I I think this is a good reason why we should be slowing down, having a dialogue, talking about this, and not fearing these town hall meetings. I'm a former mayor when I was in my 20s, and frankly, this is a great dialogue we're having back and forth. Both sides are very spirited, they're very concerned, and rightfully so, they want a chance to be able to dialogue about this. So I think if we want to stop these, these scare tactics as we talk about them, then let's slow down and stop uh, pushing an agenda that moves so quickly that people think the worst rather than looking for the best. All right, let's listen to what I actually think is the most important thing that Chuck Grassley said at that town hall meeting yesterday that everybody has missed. Tactically, this is the most important thing. He said to this crowd that he wanted credit for slowing down the health reform process. Well, I think that I have, by sticking my finger in the dike, I've had an opportunity to give the grassroots of America an opportunity to speak up as you're seeing every day on television and I think and and I think that that's a I think that that's a good thing Nikki Songas, President Obama mentions Chuck Grassley constantly as one of the uh, re responsible Republicans in the Senate who's trying to work on a solution Chuck Grassley when given a chance to describe to his constituents what he's doing he says he's sticking his fingers in the dike uh, that must have been pretty disappointing for you Democrats in the House who've been waiting for the Senate to move and waiting for the Senate Finance Committee in particular, which has missed all of the deadlines that Chairman Max Block has set for it in getting this legislation done. 
Well, I'd like to go back to the notion that we're going too slow. You know, in addition to doing the two uh, town halls that I've done as a part of this August district work period, which have been so helpful to me and I think important to my constituents, I also have done four telephone town halls, which allows me to use technology to reach across the district. And in one of them, I had an 85-year-old gentleman from Lawrence, Massachusetts, an old industrial city that said in, uh, he campaigned, he's now 85, he campaigned for President Truman on the issue of health insurance. This is an issue that we have been dealing with it, uh, as a country for almost 60 years. And in this past presidential election, our two major candidates agreed that we needed to do something. And so we do have that moment. We've had 60 hearings uh, in the House of Representatives. The three committees have reported out their piece. And this is a moment in time that we have to take advantage of because the cost of doing nothing is simply too great. We all know the escalating cost of health insurance premiums, they're rising three times faster than wages. We know and we hear the data that if we don't do anything within 10 years, we could be spending one out of five dollars uh, generated in this country uh, on health care. Uh, we know that we hear the figures that each one of us is paying over a thousand dollars a year uh, to help cover the costs of those who are uninsured. And we now we finally have a moment in time where we have a president elected and committed to making a difference, working with with the House, working with the Senate, uh, and, and committed to going forward. So, you know, I think it's a specious argument to suggest that we haven't been working with on this for many, many years, but do I think we have an obligation this month of August uh, and throughout this discussion to get out there, use all forms of communication to reach out, answer people's questions, tweak the bill as we hear uh, concerns that we, we need to address, but in, in a sense, uh, debunk all the myths? Yes, I absolutely do. So I think it's been a very important month. But again, I think that we cannot uh, use these differences to go back to doing nothing. We simply cannot sustain the path we're on. Congressman Bill Bray, as we all know who've worked in the Congress, the minority party in the House is always powerless. There's